you might be asking, can we do equations for constant angular acceleration like what we did for uh, kinematics? And the answer is yes. So let's write down the equations of rotational kinematics for a constant angular acceleration. If you remember, we had an x equation um, plus v naught x t plus 1 half ax t squared. And we have vx is v naught x plus ax times t. And similar equations for y. This equation here, the velocity equation, the rotational equivalent of that one is this equation. This is the final angular velocity, which is analogous to the final regular velocity, vx. This is the initial angular velocity, like we talked about in the last problem which is analogous to the initial velocity. This is the angular acceleration, which is analogous to the regular linear acceleration, a sub x, and t is obviously the same thing here and here. Omega equals omega naught plus alpha times time. In a similar way, this equation is completely analogous to this equation. In fact, the derivation, I'm not even going to go through the derivation. We went through the derivation for these guys before in class. Um, I'm not going to do it for this one because it's almost identical. The same logic that is applied for these um, kinematic equations as they are for angular kinematic equations. So this is the final angular position, initial angular position, initial angular velocity, time, one half, alpha is the acceleration assumed constant, the angular acceleration. To solve rotational kinematics problems, we're going to use the same steps, DEVS, essentially the same steps uh, that we did with kinematic equations. Make a drawing and label the plus and minus directions. The positive direction is counterclockwise. The negative uh, direction is clockwise. Define the initial event and the final event. Two different things that happen to, well, the same rotating object at two different times. Those are the events. You have to say, well, the, the wheel started up or the wheel began to slow down, something like that, some event. Label the events in your drawing. Draw the associated angular velocities um, as directed arcs. So we're talking about kind of like what we were talking about before. Um, this would be an angular velocity that's counterclockwise with this angular arc. And write down numerical values for the known variables, look at the kinematic equations to see if, and these are the kinematic equations, to see if you can solve one of them for an unknown variable, then insert this variable into the other equation um, to find the other unknown variables. If not, then solve two equations simultaneously for two unknown variables. We've talked about that a little bit too. Let's do an example. After pressing the puree button on a blender, its blades reach an angular velocity of 375 radians per second. This is my initial angular velocity for this problem. The blend button is then pressed and the blades accelerate. Here's an angular acceleration, 1740 radians per second squared finally reaching an angular velocity of 542 radians per second. That's the final angular velocity. Here's the initial angular velocity. Here's the final angular velocity. How long does it take? How many rotations do the blades make in this process? So, um, 
We're considering this to be a counterclockwise rotation. When viewed from above, you can see that this shows a counterclockwise rotation. And that allows us to deal with positive numbers, which is a great thing. And we need to define our initial and final events. So the initial event is when we press the blend button. The final event is that the blades reach that final angular velocity. So we've got a diagram. Um, actually, you can do a little bit better on the diagram department. Omega naught is 375 radians per second. And then the final, this is the initial situation. The final situation is that omega is 542. And that's the final case. It's rotating faster, so I'm going to put a bigger arc on that. All right. Variables. Plug in numbers for the variables and put in the equations to solve to finish it off. Let's look first at this uh, velocity equation. The final is 542. The initial is 375. We have the acceleration, and we can solve for the time. Boom. I solve that equation for the time, and there you go. Now, we're going to try and find out, um, how, well, we found out how long it takes, 0.09 seconds, about one-tenth of a second. Now we're going to try and find out how many rotations the blades go through in that amount of time. And you might say, well, wow, it's probably a lot because it's rotating fast. And I would say, yes, that's true. So we're going to assume that theta zero equals zero. And that's usually a pretty good assumption. That just means that the point that you're following on these blades, the tip of one of these blades, for example, just happens to be over on, at this point where theta equals zero when you start your stopwatch. So here's theta naught equals zero. Here's the initial angular velocity. Here's the time. Here's one half the uh, angular acceleration times the time squared. Plug those numbers in, and we get 44 radians. Um, and that would be a perfectly acceptable answer. But it's asking how many rotations, how many times it actually goes around. Not how many radians it turns through, but how many rotations it goes through during the process. So we've got to convert that angle in radians into revolutions or rotations. And we can certainly do that by saying, that there's two pi radians in one revolution. But now we're going to go the other way. We have the answer in radians, and I want to convert to revolutions. And so um, I'm going to invert the uh, conversion factor and put one revolution is two pi radians. And the radians are going to cancel. The revolutions are um, going to win out. And we just have to divide 44 by 2 pi to get 7 revolutions. So they go through 7 revolutions in that process.